Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. I'm gonna explain all that as to why I've been inactive on this channel. The last video you guys saw was just a car meet video um, in Philly. A lot of cars there, cool stuff. But it wasn't like a video about my car. But yeah, if you guys watch my other videos, you know that I've had trans issues. You know that I've had a check engine light for and for numerous stupid reasons. Obviously, my trans is fine now. I got it replaced and everything. But uh, I did fix the check engine light. That's what it seems like because it has not come back on in about a day. I also am not fully catless anymore. Uh, my exhaust is catted and I have a CTS turbo back. Anybody needs a downpipe, I have a catless one here. And I still have a so I have my catted one in here too. So if anybody needs a downpipe, I got two. I got catless, which is right there, and then I got a catted one in the box. But my previous exhaust was leaking pretty bad. Like really bad. Um, it was leaking near the wells. That's another reason why I switched, because the exhaust was welded. And if I ever wanted to replace anything, I couldn't because it was welded. So, you guys see that CTS. It is a full CTS turbo back. I'll put up a picture here. I got a little sound clip of how everything sounds. I do miss how loud it was and the pops were fun and stuff, but I'm just tired of having issues. So I switched, I wanted a clean exhaust setup. Yeah, I fixed the exhaust problems. Um, the only reason I was having a check engine light was because of there was a, a cat, a, catal a catalytic converter problem. It was saying the, uh, the system efficiency is below the threshold and Oh, actually, I forgot. When I had this downpipe, the ARM ones, I was using what they call their check engine light delete um, spacer. And the spacer was actually giving me a lean at idle code, which is not good. And after, you know, using VADSCOM and communicating with the tuner, the tuner told me to remove that spacer and that solved the problem. Sometimes the spacers can uh, throw off the readings for both, well, either or of the upstream or downstream O2 sensors, and that's what it was doing. So it was throwing a lean at idle code. Um, this video is gonna be about what it's like owning and driving a Mark 7 GTI with 100,000 plus miles on it. I get to explain some of the, some of the fuckery that happens. But at the end of the day, I love this car. You guys know that. So I'm gonna stop yapping. Let's get into the video. I'm gonna show you guys a cold start, how it sounds. New exhaust setup. It's nothing special, I promise. That's literally it. So, first thing I can say about driving a Mark 7 GTI with 100,000 miles is you're gonna start hearing all types of sounds coming from this fucking area. You're gonna hear all types of stupid shit. Bunch of rattling. Bunch of ticking. These motors are just really loud. And there's nothing you or I could do about it. Once they get up there and mileage, they just get really loud. And yeah, like I said, there's really nothing I can do, nothing you can do, it's just 
how they are. It's uh, 18 degrees out is what the car is saying. That's some bullshit. Before I leave in the mornings, whenever, whenever my car hasn't been started in a, in a little while, I let it drop under one where it's at now. I just let it warm down, warm up, whatever, a little bit before I take it out. I monitor everything, make sure that everything's good. The AFR is gonna kick in once I drive it. Um, Jesus, everything's frozen underneath. Wouldn't that be funny if my check engine light comes on? After I just got done telling you guys it uh, that I fixed it, that'd be funny. Whatever makes the uh, ECU think the car is running well. We got 110,552 miles. This car is by far my favorite car that I have ever owned. It's been a long ride. You know, if I'm being honest, there hasn't really been a time period where there wasn't something wrong with it. <laughs> Which, you know, if you guys are looking to get into these cars, you'd be like, ah, you know, fuck that, I don't want this car then. But what I can say is everybody's experience will be different. I know guys that have GTIs that have absolutely, that have had absolutely nothing wrong with it. My friend Eli's got a Mark 7, same color. This is just manual. His has a lot lower miles though. The only thing he had was, uh, he had a misfire the one time because he didn't upgrade his coil packs once he was tuned. He's just a stage one on APR. And that was literally it. It's never given him any other problems than that. Then you have people like me who have had everything wrong with it. As, um, even as deep as a, or even as serious as a transmission. What I can say is, as far as the engine, the engine hasn't given me any, you know, signs that it's going bad yet. There's not many things that go wrong with them. Um, you know, they have like a, a camshaft thing that some of them are getting. Um, but other than that, I don't, and then minus the carbon buildup because of the whole direct injection thing. But other than that, there's really nothing. I, I got my carbon cleaning done months, months ago. I think around 100,000 miles is when I did it. Um, so about 10,000 miles ago. One thing I do love about these cars, that, the turbo, the turbo sound great. Now if you guys are wondering how I got it to flutter like that, it's, they sell something called a diverter valve spacer. Basically just creates a space in between the diverter valve and where it bolts in, air gets through there and it makes this sound. honestly just surprised that I fixed the check engine light I thought I was I thought that shit was there to stay good thing I bought those little spacers different ones instead of the the one that ARM sent it's gonna be a constant worry game it's gonna be a constant a constant game of wondering when something else is gonna go you're always gonna be. You're always gonna have that thought in the back of your mind that, all right, you know, you might want to chill out because you know, something will, something, something can go. There hasn't been a time where I haven't been worried about the possibility of something breaking or blowing up or just not working anymore even right now when I'm cruising 65 miles an hour like it literally doesn't matter you know these are great cars but at the end of the day you got to remember that it's a German car these cars are extremely sensitive and very expensive to fix if something goes wrong you know another thing that I'm really shocked 
talked about is my turbo also like I've had I've under boosted and over boosted a few times I think like twice two or three times but that was all tuning related the tune I was the tuner I was with was horrible sneaky tune for watching this Fuck you you suck you know I, I have no way of knowing if the turbo was replaced before I bought the car or whatever or replaced at some point before I bought it. It would make sense if it was, because, you know, I have, like I said, 110K. I feel like the turbo would've went out by now, especially especially how I, when I, especially how I drove it, like when I first got the car. I don't know, I feel like it, it, I feel like it'd be going out like now, or it would be just toast. Bro, GoPro died, guys. I got it plugged in now. I thought I charged it enough to where it wouldn't die, but apparently not. Let me try this way. There's nobody over here. All right. <laughs> all right, that's all I wanted to do. Not too bad for front wheel drive. Is your uh, friendly neighborhood cop? So what I did to fix the check engine light, oh fuck, but I had one of these guys get put in and some help. This is a spacer. If you guys don't know, all it does, I'm trying to record here, all it does is literally go on to this end of the O2 sensor. You know, move the space, move the sensor back further from the where it goes into the downpipe. That way, it, the computer can get a different reading. I don't know if I can get in here. Yeah, you can see it. We put the spacer on there, and uh, seems to be working. I was having fuel cuts under under boost. Um, wide open throttle and it turns out to be because of this the low pressure fuel pump so we i bought a new one took it out put the new one in and the car has been better than ever um as soon as i put the low pressure fuel pump in no more fuel cuts you know no more bogging out like it would do some weird stuff i just want the car to run right i just i don't want any fault codes i don't want check engine light i'm really just trying to fix the mistakes that i made early on in being too hard on the car running the wrong tune and i got it to shoot flames at one point but to me flames aren't more important than having my car run right so but my goal is like i said i just want everything to run the way it's supposed to i want to make it to low show this year it's a big VW Audi show in Pottstown. Road to Losho, here we come.